gives you opportunities on the offensive side and I just think during that little stretch we had we were able to get stops and we were able to make shots and move. Trez just played phenomenal. Doc said he loves putting Australia on the schedule, especially in preseason. They play harder than any other team you're going to face in practice. Does, does that ring true to you? Uh, so this is my first time playing them, so I definitely can see them, you know, playing them better games, seeing the intensity, the focus, the energy that they come with. Um, I assume they do that every single night, but um, they didn't see us as anything other than a normal opponent, and I respect that. I love that, and they approach this game, just like any other game, they brought the energy and the focus, and they played hard. I appreciate that. You said on media day, you arrived with the same pair of picks, 82 games. Yep. So, I, do we see them today? No, not yet. No, no, no. So, oh, regular season? Regular season. Okay. Yeah, preseason, it's about finding those comfortable shoes. So, you don't know yet? I don't know yet, but once the first game hits, and you'll see that probably at least 70 games. Did, did you know it was Doc Rivers' birthday team? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew that. He turned, what, 65, 66, something like that? Um, did yeah, you get him anything? The, no, nothing. Oh, this one tonight. There we go. That's what we got him. But you got him that third quarter. Yeah, there you go. We sang him happy birthday today, so I thought that was good. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, That's fine. That was the uh, reaction. No, just a rookie. Yeah, that's what I thought. You had a little nice post move there earlier tonight? Showing yeah. us some more moves? Yeah, I had to show Quincy. Uh, Quincy's my my young boy. I've known him for some time, so I had a feeling he'd bite on the ball fake, so uh, it was definitely a good move. What about the, uh, the alley up there from Lou? I told, him, I told him young me would have dunked that one. Yeah, uh, we had a similar play when we played in Toronto together, and I dunked that one. But this one, I finger rolled in, and I told him young me I would have banged that one, but old me had to lay that one up. <laughs> You said before that you um, respected the way they competed. Do you think maybe some of the younger guys underestimated them coming in? Um, I think we all did, honestly. Um, I think we tiptoed into the game. Uh, we allowed them to make the first, second, and third punch before we woke up. Um, and that's not true professionalism on our part. Uh, but it's preseason, we're still learning. Uh, despite the vets, despite the amount of years on this team, you know, we're still learning. Um, take one day at a time. But, they came in, focused, ready to do the job, and they played exceptionally hard. And I respect that a thousand percent. And all of us as a team, you know, we just weren't ready in the very beginning. Is it helpful in your preseason to play against a team that's not approaching it like it's a preseason game? Oh, definitely. Uh, to play a team that's um, hungry, play a team that's energetic, play a team that wants to get up and down and run, play a team that sees you as just some another opponent on the schedule. Uh, nothing more than that. And they're not afraid. You know, you appreciate games like that. Uh, you honestly enjoy more games like that because you know they're going to play hard. They're not going to back down. They're, not, they're all for the whole entire course of the table. You, you've been in the league a while. You've been moved from team to team. But how much easier, is it easier when you come in with a guy like Paul, a guy you've played with the last couple of years, you know and familiar with? Is it easier at all? It's easier to come into a situation that you're familiar with the guys in general. Um, I had the honor and the privilege to play with Pat Beverly in Houston, Lou when I was in Toronto, uh, I've known Trez, uh, watched him since he played, you know, college basketball. Uh, I've known Lowe during the circuit. I played against uh, Jermichael in college. You know, he went to Alabama, I went to Kentucky, so we had that little head-to-head -head, uh, quite often. So all these guys on this team I'm familiar with, I've known. So it's, it feels good coming to a situation where it feels like you're picking up, uh, picking off where you left off. The guys like you, Lou, and Pat, have you guys been talking you know, over yeah, yeah, the we, years? Yeah, we all, yeah, you know, stay in touch, you know. Um, Couple of text messages here and there, um, but now that we're together, you know, obviously it's it's more talking than what had been in the past. How cold is guys? It's freezing. I have issues like my hands get extremely cold, uh, which is why I always have a hot pack in my hands. But out there, I can understand there's hockey games tonight, so there's, there's ice and you know, hockey players get cold, so I can understand. But I haven't played in, in cold like that in a while. Me and the KC, it's always warm in the arena, so it's my first time being back in that environment again. It was a little chilly, but I thought everyone had a little bit. Um, obviously, it's just preseason, but um, how far along defensively um, do you feel that you guys are right now? Oh, we still have a long way to go, you know. Um, working up the ladder, one game at a time, one day at a time. Uh, work to improve on every single area, every single aspect on the defense side of the ball. Uh, of course, we don't have Kawhi and Paul out there to fully complete the team, but the guys that we have out there, we work towards being that you know, top three elite defensive team in every category for uh, 48 minutes out there on the court. But it's going to be a process. We're not going to get there quite yet, but we will get there in the end. After you're at this point in your career, in your career, more than a decade, how easy for you to like, run a new team like this and that kind of transition to you know, Doc and you played for him before. It's like, 
if you would, when you switch teams early in your career, was it much harder? Yeah, uh, first time being traded, even the second time, it was very difficult being young, um, not knowing the true business side of the NBA. Um, now, being older, being more mature, uh, being you know in the league for a long period of time, and developing relationships, knowing players, knowing coaches, uh, it's so much easier. It's a smooth transition. Nine times out of ten, if you're in a new situation, you're going to know at least half the people on the team, from the coaches to the staff to the players to you know um, the people upstairs. And coming here to LA, you know, I literally I know half the people on the team. So it's it's smooth transition. Uh, Doc and everyone is black and white. They're forward. They tell it how it is, what, what they want from you, what they expect from you, and that's stuff that you appreciate, especially being the vet. Since I played with him in Toronto, defense. That, that's the number one. He's always been phenomenal on offense. You know, this, he doesn't get enough praise offensively, but defensively, um, he's improved so much. Being in Toronto, I remember, you know, teams taking advantage of him on the defensive side of the ball. But seeing him here, you know, since I've been here, just seeing his improvement, his strength, his ability to hold up guys in the post, his ability to get steals and use his length on the defensive side. So I would say overall, his defense is really, really incredible. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think a couple years in Cleveland, someone mistook you for LeBron? Yeah, that's happened. Has that happened time. here? It's no, it's never happened yet? here. You're no, in the same city. It's never now. happened here, no. But it's happened. It's happened in Cleveland. It's happened in Santa Barbara. It's happened on vacation. It's happened in Miami. What do you do with that? Sometimes I'll roll with it. Yeah. Do you? Sometimes I'll roll with it. If it's like a little kid and I'm like, hey, you might not actually get to meet LeBron in person, so I might as well take the reins and let him feel like he met LeBron. But it's happened a couple times. And I told LeBron, uh, it happened when I was in Cleveland in Chipotle before the game. And he goes like, Next time it happens, we just roll with it. You know, I'm like, yo, if I go over to like a car dealership and they think I'm you, like, hey, don't be surprised. And you see in the headlines, LeBron James bought like some cars. But surprisingly, it happens more often than it should. What about taking photos? You take photos of fans if they think you're LeBron? Yeah. Yeah. It just depends who it is. Oh, if it's like a little kid and somewhere random in the world, and I feel like you may not get a chance to meet LeBron. Anthony Tolliver tweeted yesterday that some he went to a pumpkin patch in Portland, and someone thought he was Jerry Rice. <laughs> yeah, hope he rolls with <laughs> All time greatest watch. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I'm 56 years old, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look like it, right? <laughs> Thanks, Pat. No problem.